Okay, we are joined live with IPO Belief Council, Boris Ifan at your four, uh, to updating us what transpired today in the appellate court. Recall that today was rescheduled, making a U-turn regarding uh, the first date given, that is October 11. It was rescheduled today to hearing what um, argument the defense counsels have uh, in the case of FGN versus Namdekano. So we are here live uh, with uh, the IPO Bidit Council and we hope uh, he would furnish us with what transpired today in court. Barista, over to you please. <coughs> Thank you so much for having me on your platform. Um, I'll be as brief as possible because I have other uh, compelling uh, things to attend to. But, um, we need to clarify our people about what are, what has been come to the first of all let me use this opportunity to make this clarification regarding the the rescheduling of the case from 11th of october to today so you understand that when we file this appeal in view of the nature of the appeal and the need to hear the matter speedily uh, we have an application we we'll file under what they call fast track rule of the cover appeal. So for accelerated hearing of this appeal and also for time abridgement. So and also have a letter we wrote to so President of Cover Appeal requesting for the matter to be heard given a status hearing. So and we are given a date in October then. Uh, within that intervening period, the federal government filed a responding brief with an application to for extension of time to regularize what they file outside time allow under the rules of crop bill. So and also we replied immediately. So I believe his lordship um, during the period we were looking at the file and uh, observe we have an application for a certain hearing of the matter brought on portion to fast track rules of the file for the copper appeal. So that was basically informed why the, the matter was brought forward. So and the appeal was had today. If you're if you're in court today, if you have opportunity opportunity to be inside the court, of course you've seen things yourself today. So the appeal was hard on the merit. So um, let me also correct because I, I, my attention was also adverted to publication made by the by the BBC to the fact that um, one application of file was struck out, and that was where they stopped at that point. So it was an application for a certain hearing of this appeal. And time abridgement. They having so much to consider it on the merit. The court said, by which sure the father abuse have in a chase stage, and parties are now before the court, that their application has been overtaken by event. Because the, what actually we are asking the court to do has been done in practice. We are asking the court to hear this matter expeditiously uh, uh, and also to abridge time, provide under the roof for appeal to be had. So, having brought that matter forward from October 11 to September 13, the court has technically granted an application and portion to which it was, at least on the record of the court, uh, moved and they struck out, applied to be withdrawn. So the court had the application on the merit. And the court was very emphatic about the uh, about the lordship disposition to deliver judgment in this case as quickly as possible. Because that was first observation the court made. The court is also not mindful of the fact that under the court of appeals and also extant laws, that they have 19 days from today to deliver judgment. The court was very emphatic that this appeal, can, the judgment of this appeal, we will not, will not be surprised that call if they have access to come back in this for if we will see your notice from the court in this 14 days to for them to be delivered. The court observed that, observed that. So and they were emphatic that the uh, the that appeal judgment will be delivered as quick as possible. So uh, my happiness today is that the argument was exhaustively canvassed. On the merit, an objection was marvelously presented, adopted, done by his, by the Nelson SIN. All done issues of laws and fact and weird clarification are needed. We are made in open court, so and it became very clear to the court about what also what brought us to the court. While we are challenging the, the seven count charge being returned by the federal court, so and also 
the issue of extra other rendition of Onye Dumazendani can we also discuss today. And thankfully, for the first time, for the first time, the federal government, ably represented by the council from the AG Federation's office, admitted before the court that Nanikano was actually kidnapped by the federal government in Kenya and brought here to come and face the trial. So obviously, I, I believe that by the time he was making that submission, he would understand the implication of that dialogue of argument. But he has made a point. And also, furthermore, he also admitted before the court today that he amended this charge seven consecutive times. Even the court was worried. <laughs> In open court, you admit, admitting. You admitting before this court that you have made a charge, seven count time, a seven consecutive time. What are you trying? What, what are you trying to? What are you trying to? What are you trying to? What message are you trying to pass to the public? So if you amend it, if I amend the charge, and respondents are filing applications, probably for one reason or the other, you will blend them because you cost it. These are things that were shouted out in open court today. So and you should also understand that part, reason. Part of fundamental grounds we are raising this we are in the court of appeal for the statute to determine was for the court to determine the issue of external edition of Mazin Nandikan in, in flagrant violation of section 15 of of resolution at LFN 204 of Nigeria. Because at the point he was abducted in Kenya, there are legal rules under the law which through which process he was brought into this country. Also, don't forget the fact that Nan Bikano never traveled to Kenya on his own. No. Nan Bikano or never traveled to outside the country. There was a clear, a visible attempt to eliminate him sometime on September 14th, from September 14th to 14th of September 2017. And by out of, by sheer out of providence, he escaped being killed. Of course, evidence abounds over 28 percent. Senator Sen and Hans Villas were murdered in his home by Nigeria, by the soldiers. Who were there to kill him? So now, all the fact relating to what transpired in his home on 14th of September, precisely, also captured in in every bit evidence, in every bit and every bit of evidence will also present before the court. Now, he's not in Kenya. Before you talk about bringing him to this country, there are laws that said he will be subjected to extra, extradition proceedings. That's number one. Or the Kenyan government must have consented. For him to be to be arrested and brought to this country but as i speak to you let me mention this to you we have a process filed by the federal government, government in the matter an action initiated against the government of kenya for their uh, for their role in the abduction kidnapping and extraordinary rendition of Nigeria. to nigeria we have a process before going on with their court which they maintain as i speak to you today can government maintain from record available to them? That land can is still in, still in Kenya. I hope you understand, can you understand what I mean. That is still in Kenya. So apparently telling the world that they are part of what, what part of the of the of the of the of the of the violent manner in which he was abducted and brought to this country. It wasn't brought to their attention. That they, they, they are trying to resolve themselves. So in that in that in that case. So now by admitting before the open, before the open court today, during submission by a federal government lawyer, that they abducted in the canal and brought him here to face justice, that they have not committed any offense. If we are talking about violation of international laws, to which Nigeria is a signatory to, is part of, is also is a signatory to, to, the, to the laws. So these are what we are talking about. So and that was admitted in open court today by the right to the federal government. So, and do not forget, don't forget that this is the first grand, first issue listed for the statute to determine whether the manner in which only Dumas Nakano was adopted in Kenya and subsequently brought into this country, whether in that manner, whether uh, on the face of that, that, act, about that, that, that action taken by the federal government, whether he, he can face the trial, he can face the charge amended, some can charge amended as a today, amended against him, file a profile against him. And the answer is no. Because section 15 of the Restoration Act is clear that even if the person is lawfully brought into this country, well, that section is in the stage where someone has passed through the process of restoration proceedings and subsequently brought into this country lawfully. That even when it's brought into this country lawfully, that the person will only face the charge for which, for, 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 for
he escaped from he escaped from, 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 from trial. But in this case, he was not brought into this country for lawfully. He was firstly arrested in Kenya, tossed before he, he was also uh, secretly brought into this country. Then now, these are these, these actions were taken by the Nigerian government in care of violation of international laws. Right. Now, going forward, going forward, the federal government of Nigeria has also amended the Prevention Act of late, which is now in toy force. That section, section 23F of that law, says that in the event of this kind of situation, where if, if, if a nation, a nation of another country is abducted from a different country in violation of extant international laws and covenant, that that country, that country, that that country breach of that law, eh, has committed an act of terrorism against that, that person. So, as it stands today, Nam the Cameron is a victim of terrorism. So, this is a part of argument that which also have been brought up before the court of appeal today. And I, I doubt, and I'm trying to find out how they are going to escape it. So, because the facts speak for itself. And that appellate brief as well, we will file to the fact effect, is very exhaustive on that point. And other issues of laws will release that has to do with no problem of a case established before the court, before Nam the Cameron, the problem of the before the lower court. Cannot sustain the bogus charge and allegation against him. If you are in court, when the responding counsel was trying to make him, we were about to provide evidence that the, 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 the trial has to go on before the before the court determine whether the evidence attached to the charge attached to the charge can sustain it. The court was curious. His lawsuit was close to find out for him what led to the striking out of eight count, out of fifteen count, original five, and he was trying to was doing that, was struggling to answer that question. At the end of the day, he came back to, 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 to his simple truth that the providence attached to the child cannot sustain the child. And that was the reason why the eighth count out of 15 count was struck out the Benny seven. And that is why we are in court of appeal today to tell the court, my lord, that even evidence this were relying upon has been evidence, statement of witnesses or no witnesses filed in court since 2000, December 2015. That's the only evidence they have before the court in prosecuting this matter. They will not file for evidence. In all this amendment that have been effecting, from five count amendment to seven count, from seven count to fifteen count, before it was eventually returned to, to uh, it was struck out many seven. Yes. Um, so we understand, or should I say, um, have rumors uh, or unconfirmed information regarding the remaining seven count charge. What did the three wise men of the appellate court uh, had, had to say about it? The, the, the point that's wrong in court, that we're in court, that the actions of um, were in court of appeal to challenge the remaining seven count charge on the grounds listed on grounds of law, facts, and misla and facts. So, which have been have argued on the merits by the United today. So, the arguments was taken from both sides, and uh, we are with, with judgment until when judgment is delivered, we will not know what they say about the appeal. But we are strongly and firmly believing. That appeal, this appeal, with God, God being on our side, will be found victorious, and then that cannot be set free. Thank you. Okay. Um, we want to know questions uh, bound regarding the health status of uh, Amazon and the Kano, the IPOB leader. Oh, the, 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 his health condition is part of the reason why we are caught of appeal. Uh, actually, you, of course, you may have noticed that we have an application for this bill. Which we mentioned today before the common appeal. But we've caught the thought shift in their wisdom. We have the view that since the main case is right for hearing, which the main appeal, so the appeal, it would be better for us to go into the battlefield and sort it out. Then, if you strike out that application, then on the door judgment, if the judgment goes one or the other, if the government says the seven count charge remaining are now dismissed, then that's the end of the case, settled. Then the search chief say, okay, so this and that, this and that happened. Then we cannot take a prison for bail. That will be another option. But now, of that, and the, in that application for bail, we exhaustively discuss issue, issue of his health. Do not, do not forget that his Lord Chief Honorable Justice Sinaku made farishing orders regarding allowing him to bring his own personal physician to conduct independent investigation on his health status. These orders were flouted with impunity by the, by the SS. 
Of course, this has a history of not obeying court orders. So we have plenty of them. And that's part of the reason why we are in court of appeal today. So he's, he's, he's not being managed. His, I can't say that his health is being managed by, yes, by, by SSS effectively. We don't have the facility to manage it. Of course, when he was in Kenya, he was subject to all forms of torture and air treatment. So on account of that, he's still taking drugs today. So it is high time. That's part of the reason why the court ordered that he should allow him, they should allow him to bring his personal physician, his personal doctor, medical doctor to come and examine him. This order has been flouted. She did. But few days, few weeks in the past, few weeks ago, attempt was made at bringing a doctor that would come and see him. And they said no. They said no. So, so but these are facts before the court. And today, I'm thankfully, it's not, uh, let us talk, uh, Chief Michael Zekomi also mentioned to the court that he's sick. I need to be treated. I need to be, I need to be granted for free for him to take his care of his medical uh, medical health condition. So, because SSI has no facility to, 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 to treat it. Of course, they are away about, about they are away, you are, you are away. It's, all, it's also in the public domain about the depletion of his potassium content. Uh, to content. So, these are serious health challenges that need medical, medical, prompt medical and sophisticated medical attention, expert attention. So, and don't, the SSI don't have such facilities. Right, they've been giving him drugs, they have, they've been on trial and they are, you know, giving him drugs and daily basis and what not. So, but you believe that there will be freedom, that there will be, be victory at the end of the day. We're not relenting, we're not giving rest, we're not, we're not giving any, anything to towns. We are all over the places with them. We're in court of appeal, we're in high court, we're all over, we have other, other actions to file against them. So, and I believe God will worship on this federal face of this earth that Namdekano will regain his freedom sooner than expected. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Any date so far from the appellate court? No, usually when they when appeal is hard, they don't they won't give you the you can even come to work tomorrow and receive your notice that they're going to be without this thing. So that's how they practice. That's that's the understand part of the court of appeal. They don't give dates for going for judgment. In other words, apart from that, we still have uh, November fourteenth on the table. Uh we still have November fourteenth on the table, but I can assure you most strongly that something will happen before then. Take it from me. That's okay. Thank you very much. God bless you.